Hi everybody. Today is Thursday, May 2nd, 2019. <clears throat> what I've done here is I took in this box that's in the middle and it was a package. It was a dead out from over the winter. I installed a package at the end of March. So that package has been in there for five weeks. She's been laying. They've got brood fresh bees, lots of them. What I ultimately did was broke it down and pulled out five frames of open nectar and honey and put it in the bottom box of the left small nucleus hive. Put a queen excluder. When you are going to raise queens, queen cells, if a stray queen would come back from a swarm or whatever, it, it does happen occasionally end up in the wrong box. If a queen ended up in that box and you've gone through all the work, she will tear down all of those cells. So in the upper box, there's five frames in there. The center frame is the cell frame, a frame specially designed to hold plastic cups. Then on either side of that are open nectar and pollen, a frame full of fresh pollen from this year and on a, the two outer frames are just kind of mixed they got a little bit of honey but either way pulled out 10 frames from the original hive <clears throat> turned that original hive the opposite direction and moved it over so essentially what i've done <clears throat> then i shook in the vast majority of the new new bees the nurse bees and they've got all the foragers coming in. They have all of the bees that I shook in, 10 frames of resources, but absolutely no brood whatsoever. No eggs, no larva. You could have capped brood if you were sure that there weren't any eggs in that frame. If there's any eggs, it defeats the whole purpose because they'll work on those and they'll, uh, Maybe not your queen cell cups that you add. So then you go in and do a graft. I'm not going to do a video on grafting. You can find hundreds of videos on grafting. It's real simple. But this is my method of raising the, the, the cell builder. Some people argue that you need 10 full frames of bees. Well, I've got 10 frames of bees. It's just they're stacked up and down. They've got the extra resources underneath, which makes them think whether they like, you know, when they bring in nectar, they put it in and they want to move it up. While they're moving it up, they think there's a nectar flow going on, and there is actually, as well as all of that pollen, all of those resources in there, and nothing to take care of except storing away resources and raising those queen cells. I am going to hook up the camera onto a little apparatus I've got over here and I want to see. It's been about 30 hours. When you set this up, you just set it up a couple hours ahead. Set it up in the morning and come back in the afternoon and do your graft. As long as you shake the bees and be absolutely certain that there's no queens in there. If there's if there's a if you shook your queen into it, they simply won't raise the queen cells. Now, ultimately in the end in about five days, the capped cells that they've created, they'll be capped. I am going to reassemble everything. I'm going to put the queen excluder on between the two boxes and be certain that the queen can't go up. Because if she gets up there, she'll tear them down. However, with it being up above, with a frame of open brood on each side to keep the nurse bees up there, but there again, at that point, once they've got the cells capped, that's fine. All their job is to do is keep them warm. And I'll reassemble this hive. It'll reunite. They'll carry on as usual. And somewhere around day 10, 11, 12, in that range, day 10 or 11, I will create these small mini mating nukes, the two frame boxes over there. I'll put a frame of... of uh, bees and resources as well as one of those queen cells and an empty blank frame for them to work on later and let them let that queen come out and hatch and get going so that's the plan 
that's how I do it. Um, it works really well. All these resources there again will get all reunited. It's just a short time that they're apart. Everything works out well. Um, but I want to take a look and see. It's been about 30 hours since I did the graft and just see how well they're coming along with that. So we get this hooked up. Yesterday when I was doing this, it was kind of interesting because we had a, about 30 mile an hour wind gusts and it was very windy, but it's a timing issue because I needed to get it done so that way when it's the, the time to make up the nucleus or make up the, the queen castles and move them cells into it, it's going to fall on a weekend, which I need because it'll take me a bit of time. And it's just a timing issue. I didn't want to wait. Um, if you try and do this on a on a weekend, then you're going to be in the middle of a week on that day 10, 11, doing the transfer. So let's go ahead and get into it. You should be able to see me from there. An important note when you set this up, they've got that frame that's full of pollen and you also want to go ahead and fill, use a feeder. You want them bees as well fed as possible. That's why the open nectar, the feeder, keep them well fed. Them nurse bees are raising your queens. I don't have a smoker. And that's not that I'm be, trying to be a tough guy or anything, but just don't need it. These bees are nice, gentle. Lots of bees up there. And I can see from here that they got, we're going to see what, what it looks like when we pull it out of here. And go ahead and really gently get these frames apart. The bees in your way, just use your finger and real lightly, just move them out of the way. Some people want to use a smoker and smoke them out of there. Sometimes you have to. There are some hives that you do need to use a smoker, but these are, these are good. Let's see what this looks like. Now we got to be really careful because these eggs, the larvae that are in there are hanging upside down and we don't want to do anything to jar them. Right now, there's one right there that they didn't accept, one on the corner. But the rest of them, it would certainly appear that we have full acceptance of the others. And see if I can get one cleared off so you can kind of see where they're... Uh, building out that wax just in a little over 24 hours. Come on girls, we want to get a picture. So with these being clear cups, I can see right now that they've filled them very well with royal jelly. They're going in and they're already building those queen cells. It'll look like a peanut hanging down off each one. Somewhere around uh, three quarters of an inch or so. These bees, I mean, I can feel it. The, the fanning of them is, uh, it's like a little cooling fan. But they adjust the temperature to be what they want. But you can kind of see along there, they're, uh, except for that one, they're working on all of them. So let me get this back in there. Just loaded with bees down inside here, which is exactly what we need.
So that's exactly what I wanted to see. Um, that's good. At this point, I just, I had to see it. I wanted to do a video yesterday of putting it together, but it was just too windy. You can imagine trying to shake a frame full of nurse bees down in here in the wind. Um, it was uh, quite fun. But sometimes we just do what we gotta do. We gotta take advantage despite whatever weather conditions. I don't leave anything to chance. I put the straps on. So there again, ultimately here in a few days, or well in five, on day five, those cells will be done. They'll be capped. The bees are gonna fill them full of royal jelly. And at that point, um, they'll be capped. And aside from keeping them warm, at that point they could be pulled out and put in an incubator. Some people will use a chicken egg incubator, which holds around, you can set just at the, 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 uh, the incubation temperature for all of these bees is right around our human body temperature, 97, 98 degrees in that range. But no need for that, the bees will take care of it. To pull that frame out for a minute or two and look at it, no problem. When I reassemble this and have that queen excluder to make sure they're just going to be up in there, let them keep them warm. They'll keep them. Just the main thing is, if we wanted to, we could use, they make hair roller, hair roller cages that I could assemble around each queen cell and allow them to come out into those individually. That would be one option if I had to go out of town or something or if there was a worry. The biggest thing is just making sure that because if you get to day... 13 or 14 and they all they will all hatch within hours of each other um, Nature's an amazing thing. So I'll do a follow-up